Hi, my name is Kurt Gessler, and today I will be leading you on a walkthrough of my current favorite timeline tool, TimelineJS. TimelineJS is an open source timeline tool built in JavaScript by NU professor Zach Wise in the Night Lab. It's based on a Google Drive spreadsheet, accepts photos, video, tweets, audio, maps, etc., and generates fully responsive embed code. Yes, that means you can host it on your own site. Most of the work is done in two spots in Google Docs, aka Google Drive, and in the TimelineJS website. I'll give you a quick tour of what uh, timeline I did recently looks like. This is of the coach Mike Ditka. You see it works where each timeline entry is its own card. You kind of flip through it almost like a uh, photo gallery and you see it does YouTube embed Play it right there you do not need art with each individual card. You can do audio, that's a SoundCloud embed. All in all, a pretty nice presentation for any kind of linear narrative you have to deal with. And going back to their website here, let me take you through how you would accomplish that. About halfway down, you see there is a tutorial right here on their website. First thing to do is get a Google spreadsheet template. Let's grab one quick. We will use this template. And then the first thing we'll do is clear out all of this individual data here. So let's see if we can. It's going to let us bulk clear it. Oh, yes, it is. So let's empty all this stuff out and then put our own information in. You'll see how easy it is. Now, one thing you do not want to do is all the events are triggered by this header file here, start date, headline, text. If you happen to delete any of those, it will not work. Just return them to its original state and things will be fine. Now I have some data preset already, so I'm gonna start copying and pasting it right here. The first thing we're gonna get is a SoundCloud embed. So probably, ha, caught it, autoplay, if I'm not quick. I just wanna grab the link right here. You'll see this is a 63-minute press conference when the Bears hired Mark Tressman. So the start date was, take a peek again, I think it was 113, no, 116. Let's go back here. So it's January, helps if I spell that right, 16th, 2013. See, so it adds time right there. Now, for some events, time-based um, data is very important. Um, for this, we're just gonna go each day. But if you had like a manhunt or something where you're gonna do minute and hourly updates, would be very, would be very valuable. Uh, headline, bears hire. Trustman, 63. It's a long audio file, I wouldn't recommend that. But. As a timeline entry, you can choose whether you want to enter that or not. So you see I have start date, end date, headline, the text, media, and media credit. We don't need a media caption or thumbnail with this. Uh, let's continue getting more data here quickly. The next entry here is going to just be a text entry, no photo or anything like that. And this was what date? Uh, September 8th, season opener. We have that. Let me slap that there. Oops. So again, a little headline. And very simple. What's our next entry? Ah, Flickr photo here. You'll see that a lot of the photo sharing tools um, it works very gracefully with. So I'm going to grab the URL. See uh, some fan photo here of. Patrick Manley, I think Slauson is an offensive link. He's the starting left guard, maybe. And I have no idea who Boggs is. Maybe that's Wade Boggs. Put it over here. Oh, sorry. That is our media, not our text. This was the 15th, I believe, 9.15. You see, however I enter the data, whether I enter the month, spelled out or the day and the year 
um, it pretty much tries to normalize it uh, according to what it thinks is going to work. Uh, we'll just call it fan photo here. You'll see during this tutorial, I'm not an amazing typist. And that I don't really know what I'm going to say doesn't help at all. Um, now we have room for a photo credit, and this is Mark Susina. Congratulations on your newfound celebrity. Okay, um, going back to our data file here. The next one is an image we can grab. Okay, we're going to scale this down just a notch to 600p. We'll grab that URL. Okay, so we have a photo. That is a Tribune photo. Put a caption on this. Again, most of these are pretty simple text just for the purposes of illustration. So here is our description field. And this was also on the 15th. We fill these out. Now, the start date and end date, if you start having events that are excuse me, multiple weeks or um, cross evenings, say, if you're doing, again, some kind of manhunt. That's where that more comes into play. For this kind of simple timeline, I'm just using, again, start date, end date on the same day. Uh, there's Beat Vikings. All the data there. Close out a couple of these extra windows. Go back here. Oh, you know what? Let me do one more thing here. I can get the actual article up here. I'll show you that the description fields are all HTML active. So if you wanted to use these to, say, build bridges to other stories or data, you certainly could. I would target underscore blank them so that they can always return to the linear narrative timeline. We'll just do a read story. So this does not have to be a dead end. This can be a trailhead to more information. Go back here. Here is a tweet we'll embed. It's from Bears Beat reporter Brad Biggs. Looks like they mis misspelled their uh, first round draft pick's name for the Vikings game last year. So that's our media. Whoa. It there, oops, wrong, wrong spot again. Go back to this if I can get something here. I think that'd be our headline. And this would also be on that same 15th. Okay, what's next here? Oh, we'll do a YouTube video here. See, the NFL hasn't pulled this one down yet. So I will go here. Make sure I grab the short link. And there I did it again. Put it under the media field. And this was from the 22nd. As you can see, a lot of the issue with um, building a timeline like this will be actually getting your data to begin with. Hmm. Well, let me pick that up. There we go. And if you have all that data prepared, you know, it's going to go easy. A lot of it's going to be in the hunt of getting all these various media items and information and stuff like that. So realistically, once you get to Timeline JS, this is often the easy part. Cutler's Tough Guy Tackle. Not really a tackle, but he 
hits Robert Golden. Okay, what else do we have left for this here? Uh, we have the actual gamer right here. Bears winning in week three. So this is our description. We have no media. So we'll do Bears stay undefeated. Again, it's 9.22. And I think I can build a link here to the story as well. Let's do that quickly here and then see where we're at. Using a simple anchor tag. And there we go. Okay, now the next step, once we have this kind of roughed out here, is we're going to go to File, Publish to the Web, Start Publishing. And you see then it is fully published to the web. That means this is now available to the public. So we're going to grab the URL of this spreadsheet um, and go back to the Timeline JS uh, page. You see we published to the web. We're going to paste in our URL right here. You see it is width is set at 100%, good responsive setting height 650. You can make some adjustments, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And you can hit preview right here. Let's see if it worked. There's Hire Trustman. There's our SoundCloud. There's winning the opener. Had no art. Here was the fan photo with photo credit. Here's our photo. Read story. Let's see if this link works. It indeed works just fine. There's our Twitter embed. There's our YouTube embed. Just play it right here. Let's all watch Jay Cutler lower his throwing shoulder. Bam. Let's pause this here. That will keep playing audio as you switch slides. And the Bears stand defeated. So this works just fine. So if you wanted this on your website, all you would do is go here and copy and paste this embed and put it into whatever content item would host said embed code, and then you'd be done. So as you can see, this is a really easy tool to really highlight visually a linear narrative and um, very easy to publish. The only trick is getting the data in the first place. But since it's a Google spreadsheet, the good news is you're not feeding this into a, someone else's website where they would host the data. This is always data that you host and you own. Again, thanks for listening. I hope this is a tool that you find very useful.